All right, everyone, welcome back to the 2020 Silver Cup presented by Disc Mania and Rolling Ridge Disc Golf Course. I'm Nate Perkins, joined here with Kevin Jones. What's up, Nate? How we doing today? Doing good, man. We got Ricky Wisaki, James Conrad, Kale Visca, and Johnny McRae. Tight grouping at the top. This is round two action. Shout out to OTB Discs and Gotta Go, Gotta Throw for sponsoring this coverage. Yeah, we got all the ballers from yesterday. Two 10 downs and two nine downs. Those are really solid scores. Not many mistakes being made. Just playing really clean. Hole one is a really specific shot. You're either gonna force an overstable flex shot if you're throwing a backhand, so something that's gonna turn over hard to the right and finish left late, or you're gonna jam a sidearm up there through the small left gap. Johnny probably opting for the turnover. Yeah, we saw him throw that pretty soft turnover on the right side yesterday that just scooted up into circle one. That's right. Is that the same exact shot right there, Kev? That All was right. awesome. Now I'm really impressed. <laughs> I mean, it went through the same six-foot gap. I've just never seen anybody attempt to play it like that. No, there, he's not trying to have any flex back or anything. He's just turning it over into the gap, and it's really effective. This is one of my favorite players to watch right here. Kale LaVisca has some of the smoothest... Get out of here! <laughs> Up on the. That was wild. That got a little. That got a little sneaky, right? Yeah, it had to to yeah. get to be that close. The result, though. Wow. But we're gonna see a ton of those really smooth shots from Kale. And this is that overstable force that you were just talking about. James is going Firebird here. Whoa. Wow, oh, that, that's, that's the shot that seems like it fits the best. The James did it to perfection right there. Yeah, it looks like Ricky's going pig forehand on this left gap. Oh, looked good out of the hand. Left gap is so small though. Ricky does have a backstop here. He's probably going to give this a, a, some type of bid. Yeah. Definitely running it. Johnny, from 25 feet to start off the round, this would be nice. Right in the heart. JC starting it off with a nice birdie. That is just crazy. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone land on top of that. So three birdies on the first hole, it's hard to expect a birdie on that hole. There's so many trees and the gaps are really small, so. That's pretty impressive from a lead card right there. Is that Ricky laying down in the grass? <laughs> Look at his photo. All right, hole two. Just call it what it is. It's a par four, 423. Mando on the right. There's a, there's a few gaps. None of them are really pure all the way up this hill. And we've got pretty much a U shape from left to right, back down the hill. Two shot hole for sure. Johnny's going high and hyzer. It's a good result, right? I didn't see how well it pushed through that tree. Yeah, I mean, he's looks like he's three quarters up the way. Anything past the Mando tree is scoreable. So the Mando tree's not very far. 
And I am afraid that that is ideal. Instead of trying to turn it over more so into, like, the gap and have, like, a short upshot, Kale sacrifices that, throws it way more straight, and I feel like he doesn't have to deal with as many trees because of that. Yeah, he's going to be looking right down that hill. Yeah, he's in a beautiful scoring position from there. James is going rock three. Very clean. Up the hill. That's what you want. Is this... Ricky's going forehand roller. Ricky wants the two. We'll see here. He is. He's going forehand cut roller. That was pretty aggressive. I wonder what kind of looks he had in practice. <laughs> Me too. That would be incredible. This shot's tricky. It's going to be pretty blind. Downhill. It looks to have done it well. It's going to oh, yeah. be short, though. Circle's edge, short. You can hear that wind coming off the lake. The lake is just behind these players. There's a nice cliff right down to the shore. Oh, no. So he was pinched off right there, huh? Yeah, he had to throw a really sharp Anheuser. Pretty much hit first available. I think he could have gone through the trees, but he probably went with the safer line. Conrad with Greeny. Perfect. It's usually a pretty good shot when that disc comes out. Might be the most understable disc on the tour. Possibly. Okay, and Kale was pinched up against a tree, really affecting his stance. And because of that, he's going to be circle's edge. Still some work to do. Ricky has nothing. Ricky's oh, throwing no. over the top with a putter, just kind of trying to float it up there. Now he's 45 feet. This is for bogey, technically. Butter. Yes. That's a good putt, though, to hit that for four. He is not messing around right now. He does not have time to take a five on this hole. Johnny looks like he's just outside the circle. It's going to be just off, and Johnny's looking at a four or a bogey as well. Go. No way. No way. I'm totally speechless. I haven't seen that on a Mach X, Kevin. Dude, that's like once in a blue moon. We just talked about it yesterday. You hit it I on am. the pole and it's, it's yeah. guaranteed. Wow. I don't even know what to say. That Man. happens so seldom on Mach X baskets that you can never even consider it as a possibility. So that will make you hate a basket real quick, though. Unfortunate for Kale. It is interesting. It seems like I can relate to a lot of how these players played this hole. Being a par three doesn't really matter. We're all playing it as a two-shot hole, but mm -hmm. we would like to have a stress-free three on this hole. But it seems like we, it's hard to do that. A yeah. lot of times you end up hitting early and then finding yourself around circle's edge, which is not where you want to be on on this hole for a three, but 
Sometimes you got to cash in that putt. Yeah, this hole is playing nearly a full stroke over par. Yeah. That was a cool, cool line by Ricky right there, going for the forehand roller. And we got three fours and a three here, so that's interesting. All right, hole three. Tournament director got out there this morning and uh, cut that tree down. So we've got the clean gap right here that we're flying through, only 12 feet across. You want a hyzer early of this grouping of trees right here. Get one to stick into this hillside or maybe get a little roll toward the pin. This hole has two shots that you can attempt. You can attempt a flex forehand, fits the gap really well, or you can do what Conrad's gonna do right here. Throw a fairway driver. He's going T-Bird. And he does it again. It's it's beautiful. That's pure. Oh. Okay. Yeah, awesome result. He's yeah. gonna have a greeny putt from there, I'd expect. Super tricky putt. But still, like that's what you want to do on the hole. Covering ground is so important here. Ooh, and Johnny held on to that one a little too long, and that's gonna be jail over there yes. on that left side. 100%. He's going to find out how hard it is when you don't cover a lot of distance off the tee. Now, Ooh. Kale hitting early as well with the M4. I remember two years ago, Kale threw one of the most beautiful shots I've seen on this hole with a mid-range. I believe he toed it. And Heiser flipped through yeah. the gap while it's moving back to the right. Yeah, moving slightly right, but still like, you know, like you said, hyzering a little early. Ricky needing to get sneaky because he was attacking more directly at the basket with that shot. Doesn't get sneaky though. Should have a pretty pretty easy three from there. Three's good on this hole. Three is not bad. Is Kale on the left side? Okay, he is. He's going to be outside the circle for his par look. Yeah, and extremely ob obstructed. I like what he had to do, though. Johnny, we're seeing, is in massive trouble right now. Sometimes when you're scrambling, this is a perfect example of a hole where you can't park the upshot. You just need to get yourself in makeable range. Yeah, that's a great point. Johnny doesn't even have that option, it wow. seems like. That's a great shot. Yeah, that's very technical, what Ricky just did. And Johnny McRae is busting out the turbo to go up and over those trees, kind of where Ricky just threw his putter. But we're really getting a good look at why this course doesn't have more double-digit scores. Right. It's because these par threes right here, they have trouble. You're exactly right. This is a solid example of a common par three out here. Very tough to get. A lot of times you're gonna end up scrambling if you don't get down the fairway. But just overall, really difficult par three. And you called it. James is busting out the old greenie. This green can get really frustrating, actually on all sides of it. You've got a little hump on the backside. Oh, Conrad. Yeah, it must have been small. Oh yeah, I guarantee it was. Yeah, I've been really frustrated in, in the general area of where Conrad is, trying to find a clean putt at it and just not being able to. Yeah, what's your take on that? I mean, sometimes I hear people talking and they would like the circle to be clean. Do you, do you like it where you can only access the pin from, from one side? That's a great question. I think it totally depends on the case of the hole. Um, if we have free range to an ability to land our disc on whichever part of the green we want, I think it's fine to have bunkers on the green, such as trees and stuff, so that we know we need to land on certain side of the basket. I think that's valuable information that we can 
gain in practicing and everything. Taking us to hole four, par four, 450 feet, the most iconic hole of the course and possibly the Midwest, as you said, Nate. This is the lighthouse hole. What, what's going on here, Nate? What, what, are, what are we gonna see from these players? Well, you can either go straight right here where the drone just flew, or you can try and saw one off and go inside the grouping of trees on the left to go for the Eagle two here. James has his Firebird, and I believe he's gonna be trying to cut this one in pretty early. I love holes like this, the definition of a local route. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, that, looks that was good. early. I'd like to see where. Where do you think that would have ended up if no tree hit there? It's hard to tell. That might have been two left. I think. I think so too. Yeah. I think the Firebird's really overstable. It could work, but I think it's coming in a little early there. Either way, like that's pretty doable three, which is what he wants. Ricky looks to be pretty much sacrificing. Oh, and that's the tree that you have to either go just around. Yep. Or just in front. Yeah, Ricky hits it, and it's doable from there. He's gonna have, he's gonna maybe have to go high, which is the tricky part. That's yes. kind of the fun part of this hole, also. Though. Absolutely. And there's just always a, a little bit extra wind coming off the yeah. lake here, and it makes that high approach. Absolutely. Tricky. And that's gotta beat it. That Man, was right at it as well, huh? That that tree. <laughs> I don't know what you've seen this week, but I've seen so many discs hit that tree. The better the shot looks, the, the higher chance it hits that tree. The more sawed off it looks, the higher chance that it beats it. Kale taking that straight route, and that's a great position. Yeah, so for Kale, that's literally where he draws it up. Land it on the path right by, there's... um. There's like a flag that you can have a green or a red flag to, to show if you're on the green. You want to land just by that on the safe route. Did Rick hit the lighthouse there? I heard something. It kind of sounded like he hit the lighthouse. He had a pretty open look, but that was a great approach with that pig. Yeah, these are not the easiest shots. And you really want to get this one close. I mean, you it's want to. significantly elevated. You really want to, but sometimes when you're throwing high like that, you can't even expect to just pin it. And we'll find ourselves putting on this hole, which is just takes a lot of stress out of the tank. But not for Kale. Kale leaving all the stress in the tank, not having to even think about his birdie three right here. Yeah, that'll get him back on track after back-to-back -back bogeys. Little bit left there. Oh, Johnny. Obstructed putt from 35 feet. This is such a tough look. No! Oh. No way! Sick. Unbelievable putt! Oh, look at this angle. Look at that. That's just all wrist right there. Entirely. I can't even believe that he was able to do that. And that's up into the wind too. If I remember the wind was coming off the side that he's walking toward right now. So he had to put that nose up into the wind. What a putt from Johnny. No legs or anything. I'm really impressed by that putt. I was almost as good as this turbo putt yesterday. Yeah, it's up there. As far as difficulty. Easily the same category of difficulty. Wow. Hard making this look pretty easy except for Johnny there was nothing easy about that putt <laughs> but that's what you want to see a bunch of threes on this card moving on to the next hole which there's going to be something special about this next hole as well right we got the 5k 10k hole dude huge money on the line Hole in one is what we want. I expect these guys 
to let loose for one hole and at least give it a run. This is $5,000 if they hit it with a, a manufacturer that is not of Trilogy. And if you hit it with a Trilogy disc, $10,000. And Johnny McRae aced this hole three years ago at the Silver Cup with a putter. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Johnny is likely going to throw a putter. Okay, yeah, so these players had to turn around to the camera and announce their name and what disc they're throwing. James is going MD4. This, he might be one of the best players at visualizing aces. I've never seen more aces on film. Yeah, the way he projects discs, I mean, he's always on the line getting it moving in such a good direction and that shot actually didn't look as pretty as it ended up huh yeah it looked a little too turned over but it had the stability kc pro rock this disc he's gonna hit it on a flat line and it's gonna just drift to the right really nice disc here short Still plays well though, and that yeah. rock got there so fast, man. They're, my mid range is not getting there that fast. VIP warship. Warship, so that's a mid range, eh? Yeah, I think so. Beefing up a little bit. It does take like a, a little bit out of your focus. It's really yeah. not normal to be like turn around and tell the camera mm -hmm. what you're throwing. Yeah, and build it up. It's like built up a little oh, bit yeah. more. It definitely takes you out of a routine. Oh, keep turning. Crap, that's a very valiant effort. Yeah, those are three great <laughs> shots right there. I didn't catch it, but he's got to um, be going MX3 or M4. Man, let me watch this flight, okay. actually. That could be H3V2. Oh, okay. And special shout out to Noah Meinsma for blasting the chains and spitting out left. Are you serious? Yes, dude. Noah. Yes. That's so sad. Oh, I know, dude. He was jumping up and down. And it's like, it's such a rush. And then it's such a, like, fall. Like, you, when you see it not drop in the bottom. Man, that would have been really cool for Noah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, four incredible shots, though, from this, this group. I yeah. mean, this is not that easy. Let's, to, to let's that not close. go over that real quick. <laughs> let's not go over that. That is um, really impressive. This ceiling has a, or I'm sorry, this hole has a ceiling and it also has height required to get to the pin there's a bunch of trees that if you're not over like 10 foot tall they'll scoop your disc up and pretty much make birdie impossible that's amazing though from the lead card or from our card here this is the chase card right no this is lead card kev okay yeah, okay yeah. okay okay right we had to the two 10 down leaders gotcha hole six par four 500 feet you really want to get past that first grouping of trees and the closer that you can get to this gap, the better because it is incredibly tight heading into this green here. Anything off the fairway and you're really just scrambling and hoping to get up in there. We're going to see some big shots from this car. James has got a wraith. full shot from there <laughs> and Ricky looks like he's lining up the roller pretty common play on this hole oh, really? Back door. needs to miss that bush did it oh it's still moving no 
Yeah, oh that is. Oh my gosh. That's one way to play He's the Hulk. He's almost pin high. He he might even have that that trail over there. He might yeah. have a look, dude. Oh, well, he'll have a very unorthodox look at the pin just because he's so close to it. That would be an insane two. Oh, yeah. Johnny going air shot with that giant that he's been throwing great all weekend. Man, and beautiful shot right there. That's a great air shot. Front and center. You know what Kel's throwing for his driver? No, I don't. Maybe FX2 here? Oh, fight for me. Get around. Sit. Sit. Uh, FX2 would be my best bet. Another misfire from Kale. He's got Jeffron on the bag. Yeah, and after James's roll away, he's he's going T Bird on this approach. Not ideal, huh? No. Must be really pinched. Oh yeah, he's he's going forehand roller. Oh no, and that's going to be just as tricky from. It sure on will the right be. Side. Johnny from dead center fairway cannot hit the small gap required to get up for a birdie putt, but that's understandable. As you said, Nate, this gap is tiny. That's why people are trying to cover so much distance off of the tee. Square that up. Yeah. Ah, oh, he said square that up. Yes. Kale up there, 45 feet or so for par four. Even this approach right here, it's right in between a jump putt and a throw for a lot of players. Johnny's going with the throw. Good point. It's not routine, huh? Yeah. You still have work to do right there with yeah. that little gap. There's trees that drop you down at 50 feet. Man, this is kill. further than 45 for sure, like I said. This. Man, that's a tough start for Kale. I, I'm still stunned at this roller. I mean, that went right of the bush and just kept climbing the hill. And it looks like he's he's wide dude, open. He's got the trail. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I all right, cool. I saw Eagle on Ricky's card, but I totally thought it was the next hole. <laughs> I had no idea that he tubed this hole, dude. I, that is incredible. I was entirely misled. I, I I saw his two and just assumed that it was the next hole. I didn't even consider this as a possibility. So James's T-Bird actually pushed through that first grouping of trees and he had a look for bird. I can almost guarantee that that is the first two on this hole that was, that someone putted in. Yeah, it, it, that's fair to say. I, yeah, I really can't even believe that it, even with how much cut it had and how much of the full roller flight that it had, still can't believe it got all the way up there that far. That's like two strokes on the field almost for Ricky right there. Yeah. And he's got a chance to go back to back Eagles right here. This is a par four, 524. Most of the MPO field is attacking this basket. Kind of throwing directly at it. Yeah, we opened up, I say we, but you actually. <laughs> I saw you putting in a bunch of work out there on the course. Opened up a straight at it line that is making a lot more sense than the obstructed hyzer line oh, no. that's been taken in the past. Ricky Whoa. sawed off. It's going to be good, though. I know he got the distance on it. Yeah, it's not. It's like a great shot. So, 
that would be bad. That would be a terrible shot if you did not have Ricky's power. Yeah. If you threw that, a normal person throws that line, it's heisering out and going to be in the middle of the parking lot. But OB. his is just moving forward fast enough that... So much speed on it. Getting it way over the parking lot. Probably an easy birdie from there. And James has the Wraith again. He's been dialed on this one in practice. Come on back. Come on back. Win getting under that one a little bit. Just kind of pushed it over to that right side. That's my ideal play on the hole. Push it into those trees right there. and If you get in front of them, you park the hole. Yep. If, if you not, you're them. safe. Exactly. Johnny going giant. Now, that shot, on the other hand... Oh, my goodness. Still over the road. Wow. Yeah, the main thing that these players are thinking on this tee shot is give it the business. Give it some power. Anything over the road is likely a birdie. Uh -oh. Kales is also way, well early. Over the road, over the parking lot, no problem. That was a technical shot there from Kale. Awkward footing, standstill, up shot, but he's got it done. It's gonna be a birdie. Ricky is putting this, and anytime Ricky's putting, it's gonna be close. He's so far away too, and he's still going with his same putt, no jump. Oh. He liked it too. <laughs> he did like it. <laughs> he would have been <laughs> losing it if he'd have made that. Two eagles in a row, yeah. Yeah, we can't say anything at all, Nate. Yeah. Not at least until next tournament. Oh, <laughs> gosh, it's right on line. We have to ask him, just so we have a little bit more understanding of, like, when and, and why. else putting with that new prodigy putter the p p model he s. sure is he sure is the p model s wide diameter putter kind of low around profile. with that one at all personally not that much mm -hmm. i've always liked the pa3 but there are a bunch of prodigy players that have switched to the p model s and are using it very successfully seppo pie you included oh seppo's Scorching it right now in Finland. That's what I'm seeing. 1070 yesterday. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's super hot. Good stuff, Sep. Birdies around for the crew. You expect to get a birdie on that hole. But this hole, you probably can't expect to get a birdie on. It's so tricky and touchy. This is a 362 foot downhill par three. Necessary to have a very straight flight, but then late low speed fade. And a lot of it, because we gotta wrap this corner really late. Nate, what are you opting for? Man, this is again, another very specific shot. Most of these players are going stable fairway Ricky is throwing the same disc that he threw on that lighthouse hole. Maybe a Firebird. Oh, no, and that was just too low. Yeah, that's going to be a Firebird, I believe. He's trying to put a bunch of flex on it and bring it in really late. Conrad, what, what disc is this? I actually don't know. I, I don't know either. I think that might be a, a Luster T-Bird. Very solid from him. Straight shot. Didn't get the, the finish you wanted, yeah. but putting. 
Yeah, that's where you're at if you if you go dead straight. You're just at circle's edge. Oh yeah, get a skip. Oh yeah. That's the closest one I've seen all week right there. Very well yeah, played line. That's as good as it gets. Kale looks like he's got FX2. That's got some stability, right? Sure does. It's a good disc for this hole, though. Hit it flat. It's coming out early there, though. Man. He gets a little bit more flight on it, a little more pop, and that's perfect. But Kale's not that a little off today. Yeah, and holes like this are not easy to just pick it back up on, huh? No. It's so specific. The nose angle is so specific. Ricky's not going to have much right here. He's going to be laying this one up. And we're watching lead card, so we're not seeing that many struggles on this hole. But this hole sees a lot of struggle. This hole can really get you off the fairway and really have you scrambling. And then there's a little bit of rollaway potential on the, on the green as well. I've seen a couple good birdie looks roll down into the shul and then not have a look for par. That is right. This is James from outside the circle. I'm wondering if he's going to step this one in. I would say so. Yes. It's your pocket, Kev. That is my pocket. I love it. Oh, this is a great look. Nice putt right there from James. Keeping a solid round going. I believe that's going to put him at four under through eight holes, which is more than solid, I would say. Multiple eagle opportunities coming. That is a great deuce. Have yeah. you seen one closer this week? Yeah, I, I want to say I have. I've seen a couple people just pin this hole not to take anything away from Johnny it's so hard to do he kind of went all hyzer on it too yeah some people do that yeah. there is a, like a line to carve in there on all hyzer but a lot that you have to contend with some brush out there as well Gonna bring us on to uh, one of my favorite holes, my personal favorite holes on the course. Hole nine is a reachable par four. You're gonna see a lot of these guys opt, probably all these guys opt for a road skip. Something pretty basic. If they get a big flare, they might jump into circle two and have a jump putt at an eagle. But really, this is a hole most of our pros want to secure a three on. And James has that. Firebird again, lining up a shot over the road. Roll out of there. Nothing wrong with that yeah. from James. He, he doesn't have to deal with much stress on this hole. And we saw Johnny yesterday kind of flip one up and just ride it pure through the gap. Oh, he almost did it again today, but he's going to be in prime position right there. Is that a Firebird again? Yeah, I'm thinking Don't Firebird. Don't go on the bush, please. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Perfectly through the gap. It's so awesome to be able to line that up from that distance. A skip that is skipping like 300 feet away and then going through a gap. Yeah, it is a cool shot. Oh, come on, man. And that spot actually, again, is just not gonna be a comfortable spot from Kale. Like, look at oh, this. Oh no, that is a tight, 
Man. You think he's going on that left side, or is he pushing this this tree right in front of him on the right? Honestly, Nate, I do not know. I don't know what I would opt for here. Yeah. It's tough to say actually how tight those <sighs> are. Ugh, ugh. That's so hard. Dude, the course is just kind of on top of them, you know? You miss your line by a little bit. You're in a trickier spot than you expected, and... Conrad not in the ideal spot either, coming in a little bit early. Is this something to think about, Nate, you think? I mean, we don't see James lining up forehand flick or, you know, tomahawks out of the woods too often, so it must be pretty tricky, and that is what he's going for. He's going to try and get this one to maybe land on its backside and scoot up there? Likely. Oh, wow. Yep. James is no a frisbee problem. boy, though. <laughs> That's no problem for him. What a great forehand bid Thanks, from Kale. Thanks, Johnny for Eagle. Get up. It's oh. a great bid. Back to back days where he just had a clean putt at it and gave it a good, good bid. Yeah, he's playing this hole with no stress involved. That's always nice when you can just stroll through a hole and get a birdie. This is Ricky's eagle look. He's not too happy about that one, but an easy birdie nonetheless. And it's in the hole, Kale. That's gonna be his front nine, a weak front nine from him. Really hope to see him string together multiple birdies on our back nine and that's coming up soon. A solid front nine from James. Five under? I'm thinking five under. Yeah. I believe he was four through eight. Five through nine is, is very all right. And four through nine from Johnny. We are still very tight at the top, as I imagine we'll, we will be until the final putt. Oh, for sure. Shout out to OTB, only the best discs, and gotta go, gotta throw for making this coverage possible. Thanks to Parsave. Happy to be here, Kevin. Yeah, man, Nate, thanks for joining me today. This has been fun. Parsave did an amazing job covering this round. I expect some fireworks coming on the back nine. Hope to see everybody join us. We'll catch you there.